Hey everyone, Surreal K9 here. Welcome back for more Disguise 3 Absence of Detention. In the last episode, we did the cameo or the uh, bios for the Disgaea 2 and 4 characters, along with the DS gentleman. In this episode, we are going to finish off our unique characters section by uh, going over the cameos from the other Nippon Ichi games. Uh, besides Plain Air, I have decided to do this in the uh, order of release. So, uh, yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> and with this, we will be able to move on to the generic characters, finally. Anyway, here, I, uh, here I'm getting a bunch of items because I forgot to equip everybody with their uh, item preferences. So yeah, <laughs> it's a thing, all right. <coughs> all right, let's begin. First up, we have Plain Air, who is a mascot that shows up in a lot of games. She likes her staffs and guns. She learns six gun skills, and her speed aptitude is one of the highest in the game, second only to Thursday. Her hit speed, her hit aptitude is pretty good too. Her ability, hit and run, lets her uh, gives her plus three move when she attacks first. So, obviously we got to uh, end turn here so I can show this off. But, when we attack... Sure, let's use Usa Rush. It has a range of 9, which is the highest range I have ever seen for a physical special attack in the game. So, uh, yeah. That's Usa Rush. <laughs> As you can see, her move has gone up to 8. Pretty great. Also, she actually has a voice this time. That's pretty nice. Her other ability that I have equipped, Lonely Wolf, increases her stats by 30% when she's the only person on the field. When she's the only allied unit on the field. So, kind of like the uh, the Majin's one-man army, but you don't have to kill everyone else first. <laughs> As for her third ability, her third ability is Witch Guild, which increases her stats by 5% times the number of allies equipped with stabs. Which is pretty okay, it's... It's a thing. It's a thing. Okay, next up we have Marjorie from the game Rhapsody, a musical adventure. We have a... she's a monster type unit, she prefers magic. Her abilities are as follows. Witch power increases magic offense to a unit by 100%. So her magic does double damage basically. Grudge increases int by 10% per defeated ally. If you want to put her in the comrade club, that might be good to go. That might be a good thing. Finally, Trance increases her magic offense by 50% when her SP is less than 25%. 
Obviously, she is a one-trick pony who is all about magical firepower. And as you can see, her aptitudes are pretty amazing too. Her, her elemental affinities are pretty amazing too. She learns quad elemental magic up to the terror level. And she magic changes to a staff. At least I think that's right. Let me pull up my other notes here. Yep, quad elemental up to the terror level. And plain air learns star up to the terror level. Very Sephiroth of you there, uh, Marjorie. <laughs> also, Omega Drain. That sounds like a Pokemon move. Like you got Drain, then Mega Drain, Giga Drain, Omega Drain, and then Terra Drain. <laughs> it's a thing. So yeah, Marjorie turns into a staff, which looks like a golden version of herself. But, you know, we've already seen this in Disgaea 2. It's a thing. <laughs> that is a very silly animation. Here first, the most evil witch in the universe has a deadly kiss. <laughs> All right. Anyway, next up we have Prie Show you. from the game La Pucelle Tactics. She is a physical uh, monster weapon user. Let me pull up her stuff here. Uh, you can see her aptitudes as follows. Bound attack increases the damage she deals by 10% per empty cell in the range of her attack. She learns magic, up, star magic up to the terror level, as is to be expected in this game. Uh, fighting spirit increases her, the power of her normal attack by a hundred percent. Not the best thing ever, but I mean, you know, whatever. And Show Evil Saint you. Spirit increases the equipment bonus she gets from orbs by 20%. Dragon's Rage! Same, uh, same kind of combo as she had in the very first Disgaea. Good to see it make a return here. Requiem Eternum is a huge reference to the Purify mechanic in her, uh, in her own game. <laughs> when you purify a dark portal, it uh, shoots out a stream of energy that does stuff like that. And if you make a square, if you make a loop out of it, then crazy stuff happens.
When Priye gives you a magic change, she gives you her staff, which is in fact an axe. Let's check it out. It's the Holy Cannon. Very good at dealing with killer rabbits. Other attack is Prie Change. <laughs> Show you. Show you. Plain Air and Prie, the best magical girl duo. <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Next up, we have Soichiro Kogure from the game Hayarigami. He is a fist and sword user, but he, in the original uh, Disgaea 3, he only learns one fist skill and zero sword skills. In this game, in the in absence of the tension, it's a little better because he learns both. He's got very high HP, attack, and defense aptitudes, and uh, very well. Got a couple of interesting abilities too. Judo Black Belt permanently increases his throwing range by one. I don't really know why that matters so much because, uh. Well, actually, no. I guess it gives him the uh, highest throw in the game. Karate Black Belt increases his attack against units with no weapon by 30% and Kendo Black Belt increases his attack against units with a weapon by 30%. Obviously, unless you're in the item world, uh, Kendo Black Belt is probably the one you perf you would prefer. Or if you uh, steal a dude's weapon beforehand, I guess Karate is just as good. <laughs> <coughs> Hayarigami is a visual novel. As such, it, uh, all of his uh, attacks for some reason incorporate visual novel mechanics. Pretty silly. A very bizarre character that I really was not expecting to see in a game like this. It, by which I mean the game he's, f he's from is so obscure that, uh, th well, I guess the same could be said about Marjorie and Prie, too. Especially Marjorie. <laughs> That's just silly. Next up, we have Zeta from Makai Kingdom. He's a book. He's also the most badass freaking overlord in the overlord. I don't even know. He has very low move, obviously, but uh, his attack aptitude is through the roof, as are most of his stats. Uh, Geo Break makes him immune to Geo effects. Pretty nice, I think. I don't know if it affects positive, uh, <laughs> positive uh, effects as well as negative effects, but whatever. His other two abilities, uh, Badass Nonsense decreases his res during odd turns, increases his int during even turns. Badass Impulse increases his attack during odd turns and decreases his defense during even turns. So uh, obviously, if he has both of them equipped, he kind of uh, shuffles back and forth between a, a physical and a magical style.
So, uh, I don't know who voices Zeta in this game, but I don't think it's, uh, Crispin Freeman. I think he was only in the original game. It's the one bit of trivia I know about this guy of voice actors, other than that, uh, Flan and Morona also have the same voice actor. <laughs> So yeah, Zeta. Zeta magic changes to a bow, and he's got that going on. <laughs> you know, stuff. Stoofity stoof stoof. Here's a kitty on my bed. Hey, no stripes. How you doing, kitty? Huh? Yes, I'm talking to you. What are you looking at me like that for? Huh? She is so weird. <laughs> Invite is a reference to a mechanic in Makai Kingdom. You could uh, summon units, vehicles, and buildings onto the battlefield and buildings could have units in them and also provided them with geo bonuses. Pretty neat. I may have to Let's Play Makai Kingdom if it ever comes out on PC. <laughs> anyway, Pram is uh, another character from Makai Kingdom. As you can see, she specializes in ice magic. She also learns three bow skills in uh, Absence of Justice and six in Absence of Detention. Her abilities. Prediction randomly changes the effect of her ability on each turn. I don't really know what all of them are, and it's kind of uh, unpredictable, ironically. <laughs> so, uh, you know, whatever. Absorb magic increases her int by 5% every time she takes a hit from a magic attack. Archer Guild increases her stats by 5% times the number of allies with bows. Pretty nice, I suppose. <clears throat> but, I mean, you saw me. I didn't really use the uh, any of the guild abilities at all. Even though I meant to use one on Adele, that kind of never actually happened because I was dumb. So, yeah. Oddly enough, she doesn't even have the, uh... The same sort of ability that Stella has, where, uh... People's ice, uh, aptitudes go down. Kinda weird. But, you know what, whatever. Kitty is giving me dirty looks or something. I don't know. Maybe she's just tired. Hero Prinny is the main character of the game Prinny Can I Really Be the Hero? There's a theory floating around as to who this Prinny is, uh, which I will probably not get into until he, uh, until we actually play this guy in D2. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, if you kill Hero Prinny, he just comes back. 
If you throw Hero Prinny, he recovers HP. And he takes 10 times the damage everybody else does, but uh, his ability or his evasion is through the roof. Yeah, see, he just comes back. With one HP, but I mean, what difference does it make? <laughs> he was gonna die in one hit anyway. Unlike a normal Prinny, his uh, unique skills are all references to uh, his game, as opposed to your usual, like, uh, Prillin Bomb, uh, Priver Dance, Pringer Beam. He gets uh, platforming, platform game moves. Although, uh, his magic change skills are identical to those of the other Prinnies, so uh, make of that what you will, I guess. Better than ride armor, dude. <laughs> Alright, now let's just magic change him. He magic changes to a gun and prove once and for all that he is just an ordinary printy. Unless he's not. But you know what, whatever. So, yeah, not much to see here. Thanks, dude. Next up, we have Gig from Soul Nomad and the World Eaters. Oh wait, we have to uh, show off his other uh, skill, that's right. <laughs> Even though it's identical to any other pretty skill. Thanks, dude. Way, to, uh, way to clip through the wall there, uh, plain air. Alright, next up we have Gig from Soul Nomad and the World Eaters. He's a monster type unit, he likes physical attacks, and uh, two of his abilities revolve around magic change. Gig turns into a sword, and when the magic change time limit is up, he's the one who's going to be left standing. Then his uh, stats increase by 20%. BFF increases the ability of a club leader by 5%. I'm assuming this means when uh, the person with BFF is the club leader. It might not though, I don't know. So since uh, the gig likes his uh, magic change so much, we are going to show off his magic change skills first. With a mechanic like that, you could easily play Half Minute Hero. <laughs> Double S, and that a range too. Not bad. So yeah, uh, Soul Nomad is another strategy RPG. I might get around to playing it at some time, at some point. Although I don't know if it'll be a let's play. It's 
just wait for the mad to change to timeout. Yeah, as you can see, uh, Revia got it kabooshed, and uh, Gig is the one who is left. Here I forget to uh, revive Revia before we <laughs> do the thing. Oh, except uh, it turns out Revia is just fine, so never mind. Let's show off Gig's uh, unique skills. Ha 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 ha! I don't know about you, but I like that uh that anime trope where uh where the uh where the guy's hair hides his eyes for uh for uh effect. It just looks cool. Anyway, enough about that. <laughs> Finally, we have uh, we have healing. Finally, we have Revya, the main character of Soul Nomad. Uh, this is the female Revya. There is also a male Revya in in his own game, but we decide we have the female Revya here. She learns four sword skills, but they are the uh, last four sword skills, not the first four, so very strange. Of course, in absence of detention, she learns all six. Her ability, uh, Devour Lord, steals 10% of remaining HP from an adjacent enemy after uh, her turn. Interesting. I have to wonder if that's a mechanic from Soul Nomad. Color me interested. Base Camp recovers Revia's HP and SP slightly when she ends her turn on the base panel. And Second Attack Win uh, guarantees a counterattack when her HP is below 25%. That girl there is another Soul Nomad character. I don't know very much about her. That is a very cool effect. <laughs> I approve. Alright, that being said, that is all of the unique characters taken care of. So, in the next three videos, we are going to do the generic humanoid characters. Uh, after that, we are going to do the generic monster characters, and that will probably be the last episode we have to do in this Let's Play. Getting close to the end, guys. I know I said this many episodes ago, but we are getting close to the end, so yeah. I will see you all later. Thanks for watching, everybody.